The new ranked split is here, so it's time to get you guys set up with the best solo carries for patch 13.14. Three champions for every role that have the greatest carry power for the current meta. And just before we get started, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then go to skillcap.com. Stop wasting your time grinding thousands of games only to see no progress. With skillcap, you'll uncover the secrets to climbing ranks fast that only take a few minutes to learn and can be immediately applied in your next game. The best part is, it's completely risk-free to try, as you're kept safe with our rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill cap then you get your money back no questions asked so what are you waiting for get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below all right now back to the video starting with our top lane picks now that Jax has been nerfed a new addition to the top lane solo carries for this patch is going to be fiora fiora is now the premier split push option for solo queue and becomes increasingly powerful the more time you spend on her one change that should positively affect fiora this patch are the adjustments to trinity force item is going to deal more bursts for the first 10 attacks you deal so especially when you're dueling squishy champions, this will help mow them down faster. Fiora has some of the best side lane power for any top laner, so you should be taking advantage of that. With Ravenous completion, you can take out waves super fast and draw a lot of pressure. Force the enemy to react and go collect that side wave, and if they don't, start mashing down their towers. Bandwise for Fiora, Malphite is one of the more annoying meta matchups due to his tankiness and attack speed slow, so he's a good option. Core Fiora build is a Trinity Force rush into Ravenous Hydra second and Hullbreaker third. Grasp and Conqueror are both viable keystone runes for Fiora. You can run grasp in more scrappy melee matchups where you'll be taking a lot of short trades, while Conqueror is best into tankier matchups where you need extended trades. When you think of solo carry, this champion may not be the first who comes to mind, but he's definitely one of the best right now, being Malphite. Damage is not everything when it comes down to solo carrying games, as Malphite's teamfight presence is insanely powerful and relatively easy to execute. Malphite also shuts down so many of the Bruiser top lane champs due to his ability to stack armor and reduce their dueling power with his attack speed slow. AP Bruisers are really the only class of champs who are going to give you a ton of difficulty, so using your ban on Mordekaiser or Silas is good value. 5v5s are where Malphite is going to thrive, so if you can really focus on arriving to objectives early and looking for picks with R, you're going to find some great success on Mal. The standard core build is an Iceborne Gauntlet Rush into Sunfire Aegis 2nd and Thornmail 3rd. Grasp is going to be the optimal keystone in your melee matchups, however, into range champs where you won't be able to auto attack as much, running Comet works better. Ever since her mini rework from a few patches back, Hale has been in a great spot for solo queue. Even more so in in these past few patches, where Static Shiv has become a super strong rush option for her. With Kale, it's all about scaling and getting to your level 11 as quick as possible. You really want to be focusing on yourself. Don't roam to fight at Crab if you know you'll lose it, even if your jungler is pinging. Being consistent, stacking farm, and becoming strong yourself is how you're going to find consistent success with Kale. Champions with strong mobility and all in threat are who you should consider banning the most when playing Kale, so Irelia and Jax are good options. For the build, it's a Static Shiv rush into Nasher's second and Riftmaker third. Rune Page is fleet footwork with overheal, alacrity, and last stand, run with bone plating and unflinching for secondaries. In the past, Ivern wouldn't have really been considered as a solo carry type champion, but that has significantly changed in recent patches. Daisy becoming so much stronger, combined with this new carry build, has given Ivern so much more agency over games. The best performing build right now is full out offensive with a Night Harvester Rush. This gives you a ton of dueling power whenever you have Daisy available. From then on out, you want to build a bit more supportive with Imperial Mandate and Ardent Sensor. Ivern is really the best of both worlds right now, as you have the ability to impact games on your own, but then if you have some fed carries on your team, being able to provide them utility is also a huge perk. Bandwise for Ivern, Evelyn is one of the better options for the current meta. Level 6 is where you really want to start being aggressive and forcing skirmishes with Daisy. Playing for Herald or Dragon and forcing the enemy team to react is a good way to do this. The rune page to run on Ivern is Airy with Nimbus Cloak, Transcendence, and Water Walking. Grab Eyeball Collection and Relentless Hunter for secondaries. With the likes of Kindred, Rengar, and Rek'Sai nerfed for patch 13.5, 14, it's going to give a lot more power back to Kha'Zix. Ka is incredibly strong right now with the Duskblade Rush and will actually get even better this patch due to the Prowler's Claw buff. You can look to run a core build of Duskblade, Prowler's Claw, and Edge of Night for a really solid 3 item spike. Being on the map before objectives spawn and looking to pick enemies off as they try to walk in for vision is how you're going to see the most success with Ka. You want to be catching enemies out when they are alone and least expected. Even though he's being nerfed this patch, Rengar will remain one of the best bands for Kha'Zix. The complete rune page is first strike with free boots, future Market and Cosmic Insight, roll with Sudden Impact and Treasure Hunter for secondaries. Rounding out the top three for jungle is going to be Jarvan. The meta has gotten so much better for Jarvan in recent patches, with way more melee supports being played in the bot lane. Melio is now the only enchanter in the top five most played supports, and he's even nerfed here in 13.14, so his play rate will drop even more. Prioritizing bot when you have a support with good gank assist is how you're going to find amazing results with Jarvan over time. It's almost too easy to snowball the game when you are ganking for someone like Rel or 
or Nautilus. Matchup wise for Jarvan, Kindred is a pretty solid band choice as her mobility and R make engaged plays more difficult to execute. Standard core builds, the Gore Drinker Rush into Black Cleaver 2nd and Death Stance or Maw 3rd. Conqueror is the optimal keystone rune with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. Grab Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight for secondaries. One mid laner who's already in an amazing spot who becomes even better for 13.14 is Talon. Riot is buffing Axiom Arc and Prowler's Claw which are two core components to Talon's build. Really strong build you're going to want to try this patch is a Ghost Blade Axiom Arc 2 item core. How you play the first few levels heavily dictates the rest of the game for Talon. If you can get the level 2 jump on the enemy and take a favorable trade, the entire laning phase can be in your control. If the enemy respects your spike and plays very far back, at the very least you should be looking to set yourself up for a cheater recall by slow pushing the first two waves and then hard shoving the third one. This will hem the enemy under tower with a huge wave to deal with, which gives you time to either invade the enemy jungler or recall if there's nothing to do. Our master in minutes course on mid lane macro is a really good resource when learning someone like Talon who loves being able to impact the map. Your ban when playing Talon is going to be best used on champs who can nullify early kill power like Pantheon or Vex. Complete rune page is Electrocute with Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and Relentless Hunter. Run Nimbus Cloak and Water Walking for secondaries. Another mid lane assassin on the rise for patch 13.14 is going to be Kiana. Kiana loves building Prowler's Claw, so the item seeing a small buff is a win for her. Duskblade is also just so strong right now too, and Kiana's two item core of Dusk and Prowlers is extremely lethal. Kiana is kind of the complete opposite of Talon when it comes down to how you want to play the early levels. Level 2 all in is not very powerful at all, as you really need the level 3 to begin trading effectively. Do your best to preserve as much health as possible until level 3, as that's where you can start putting on some pressure. If this means giving up a few CS early on, that's completely fine. Being half health or below at level 3 is going to be way more detrimental to the rest of the laning phase than giving up a few farm. Talon is one of the better bans for Kiana right now, as he does a good job of shutting down that win condition. The rune page is electrocute with sudden impact, eyeball collection, and treasure hunter. Roll with presence of mind and last stand for second Secondaries. There's really no mid laner with the ability to impact solo queue games as much as Nico can. Her new passive is just so broken and single handedly wins games by finding picks in the mid to late game. Disguise yourself as a minion, catch out a squishy target when they come to farm the wave, and the wins will start piling up with Nico. Nico also plays very well into many of the highly picked melee mids in solo queue due to her self peel power from W and R. It's longer ranged pick champs that can be of more issue to Nico, so banning out Syndra or Lux is good value. The build you'll want to run on Nico is a Rocket Belt Rush and Shadow Flame second and Zanyas. Best Keystone Rune is Comet with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch. Optimal secondaries are Biscuits and Cosmic Insight. An ADC who becomes indirectly stronger in 13.14 is Kaisa, as she kicks off the top three. Gale Force has been nerfed this patch, which puts a dent in the power of a large chunk of ADCs. Kaisa has so many viable build options right now that even though Static Shiv is being nerfed, she's going to remain an amazing pick. You can go on Hit, Crit, or AP, which makes Kaisa such a versatile champ. If your team is heavily lacking in the magic damage department because your team locked in AD mid and top, Luden's Kaisa is really good right now. Does the enemy team have a beefier frontline who will be stacking resists? Going crit is going to work amazing. And then of course, there's the most popular on hit build, which is going to be a solid choice in the majority of games. Early levels can be a bit rocky with Kaisa, but if you can stay even in farm, hit level 6, and get static shift completed, that's where you can really come online. To help you survive lane easier, banning out a strong metal laning ADC like Ash is a good idea. For runes on Kaisa, look to run Hail of Blades with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter. Best secondaries are Free Boots and Biscuits. Misfortune is being left in a very powerful spot to start Split 2 and is an ADC that everyone should have in their champion pool. MF with a melee support is as close to a free win as you're going to get right now. The fact so many more melee supports are in meta while enchanters have fallen off is a huge win for Misfortune. You go the lethality build and use your ultimate to one-shot anybody that your teammates CC. Ghost Blade into the Collector 2nd and Cyrilda's Grudge 3rd is a great 3 item core. It may be easier said than done, but simply playing off your teammates CC and being in the right spot to then unleash your ultimate is how you're going to see consistent results with MF. Being an ADC who lacks a gap closer, banning out a meta engaged champ like Hecarim or Malphite is good value when playing Misfortune. Rune Page is going to be first strike with free boots, biscuits, and cosmic insight. Roll out absolute focus and gathering storm for secondaries. With Riot only adjusting Trinity Force and actually making it a stronger burst item, Ash is going to remain a top 3 ADC this patch. Ash is just perfect for the current meta because, much like Misfortune, she thrives when paired up with engaged supports. The nerfs to Ghost will definitely hurt a little, but Ash is completely fine going heal, so it's not going to make her much weaker. You have so much more agency over how games play out with someone like Ash due to the ability to make plays happen by yourself. Playing off that level 6 spike can straight up win you games and something you should be laser focused on. Paying attention to your XP bar and being ready to all in as soon as you have R will net you so many advantages. Your ban when playing Ash is going to be best used on a meta champ with hard engage like Malphite or Hecarim. Core build to run is a 
Kraken Slayer Rush into Trinity 4 2nd and Hurricane 3rd. Lethal Tempo is the Keystone Rune, with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras, followed by Biscuits and Approach Velocity for secondaries. Despite a few minor nerfs this patch, Rel is going to remain a very powerful solo queue support, and she is our first selection. It's almost unfair as to how powerful the champion's kill power is at level 6 when paired with an ADC who has good follow-up. Rel is winning over 53% of the time with meta ADCs like MF, Ash, and Kai'Sa, which is pretty insane. Rel's ability to thrive into other melee supports makes her even better for the current support meta. Only champ who can be an annoyance right now is Janna due to her being one of the better protective enchanters, so she's a good ban option. The build for Rel is an even shroud rush into Zeke second and Nice Vow third. Glacial Augment with Hex Flash, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight are for primary runes. Look to run Bone Plating and Unflinching for secondaries. A really good alternative to Rel if the champion is banned out and you still want that melee engaged support is Nautilus. Nott has very similar strengths to Rel, as his lockdown power is just as good, and ability to single out a target is the best for any support. In every single lane, you should at least be trying to hit level 2 before the enemy. It's definitely more difficult when playing into a double ranged matchup, but if you're into a melee support, getting control of that wave and pushing for 2 is vital. You should always be keying in on that third minion of the second wave, and if you can kill it before the enemy kills yours, spiking 2 and going all in can reap massive rewards. Your ban is most definitely best used on Rel right now if you are dead set on picking Nautilus. Build for Nott is an even shroud rush into Zeke second and Knight's Vow third. Keystone rune is Glacial Augment with Hex Flash, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight. Bone Plating and Unflinching are the way to go for secondaries. If on the odd chance both Nautilus and Rel are banned, then Blitzcrank is an amazing third option who rounds out the top three. We all know how impactful a Blitz hook can be in lane, but if you can capitalize on your roam timers, that's where Blitz becomes extremely lethal. Rushing those early Moby Boots and looking for roam plays towards mid whenever you're coming off a reset is vital. You can almost become a second jungler with those Moby Boots and have incredible impact over not only bot lane, but how mid lane plays out. Our Master in Minutes course on laning as a support has its own section discussing roam timers, so it's a great resource to help you out with that. Who you ban when playing Blitz can depend on where you are in the pick order. If you've got last pick, then just banning out a strong meta support like Rel is a good idea. If you're first pick though, banning Morgana so you don't get countered is great too. The build to run is a Shirelius Rush into Zeke second and Knight's Vow third. For runes, run Glacial Augment with Hex Flash, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight. Best secondaries are Bone Plating and Unflinching. So that's going to be all for this one, but if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then go to SkillCap.com. With premium courses for every role and skill taught by the best players, SkillCap is the perfect platform to help take your game to the next level. Take our Wave Control course. While you wait for your next game to start, you can learn freezing, fast pushing, slow pushing, bouncing waves, the list goes on, all in just a few minutes to maximize your improvement rate. Or maybe you just like seeing your opponent's health go to zero. Then you'll love our trading course. We even have a skill test at the end so you can see how good you really are. Players just like you are leaving 5 star reviews and raving at how helpful they are. That's not all we offer though, as every week we release 10 brand new smurf commentaries where a challenger player teaches you how to climb out of the exact rank you're stuck in. If you're looking for something more personal instead, then we got you covered with one on one coaching from our trained challenger experts. All this seemed too good to be true? Well don't worry, we're backed by a rank up guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill cap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rank you've always wanted. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Good luck with your rank climbs and we will see you in the next one.